All right, I think we can get started with today's webinar. So welcome to our second installment of the Customer Exchange webinar series. Today with uh, two uh, very well-known companies and also two very exciting guests, uh, Raphael Schmidt, Global Supply Chain Risk Manager from Kercher, and Thorsten Bünning, uh, Purchasing Strategy and Strategic Supplier Management Sustainability at Scheffler. Um, maybe a few logistical points in the beginning. So the webinar will be recorded and we will share uh, the slides of our two customers uh, with you afterwards, um, as well as a link to the recording of today's webinar. Um, also, uh, a, a note, of course, that uh, our customers will not be able to go uh, for antitrust and other reasons in, in, in too much depth if there's any questions which go in detail. Uh, but I think this is understood and we know this from the existing webinars. The structure today will be that uh, we kick off with Kercher. Uh, Raphael Schmidt will show uh, how Kercher was able to save 40 times of effort uh, thanks to pre-wave holistic risk management. Um, and we will then follow up with Scheffler, who will give us the story of how they were able to complete the risk management for a part of their entities. And Thorsten Bünning will go into this uh, in his part. Uh, for the Supply Chain Act uh, in, in Germany in a very short period of time with Prewave. And with that, um, I want to hand over to Raphael Schmidt from Kercher. I will stop sharing. And Raphael, please share and uh, introduce your, yourself. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Harald. Um, so let's check the slides. You may see now. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Great. So yeah, of course I'm <laughs> taking the opportunity today, yeah, to to be part of this customer exchange here and yeah, show some insights in into our holistic supplier risk management approach. Yeah, as Harald introduced, um, maybe first of all uh, a few words about myself. Um, I'm coordinating and and taking care. Um, within our global sourcing and procurement organization um, about all kinds of supplier risks. I've spent and yeah, I'm still spending a lot of time working with Prewave in, in my role as global risk manager and yeah, we'll, we'll share with you some, some insights today. But now, yeah, as always, um, let's start with some facts and some insights. What's, what's Karcher's doing? I hope that most of you already got in, in contact with any kind of, of our culture products in, in, in your lives. If not, we may change that easily. Just give me a hint afterwards. But yeah, we have a large range of our products, as you can see here at home in commercial building cleaning or also industrial applications. So some of them you've probably already seen or yeah, sometimes even used. Here, some general facts now. Um, our turnover over the last year yeah, was over 3.1 billion. We had a huge growth since since 20, 2010 um, and also yeah, a, a large amount of, of foreign sales, um, as you can see here. When we are having a look at the, the employees as well, also um, a, a real global setup with more than 15,000, yeah, employees uh, across 80 countries also an yeah, impressive number but yeah we are also caring about um, sustainability um, so i think this slide provides you a, a quite good impression what sustainability does mean to us we have strict sustainability goals we follow and this also has has impact on on our strategy within our sourcing and procurement department also in cooperation with, with our suppliers. Um, yeah. As well, because we are a, a global acting organization with 18 production and logistics sites um, around the world, that's also an, an, a huge challenge for us in, in daily business. But all this motivated us to, to rethink our supplier risk management approach. And yeah, during the last years, our overall target as you may see here on, on the next slide, was to set up an, on the one side an innovative, holistic and sustainable supplier risk management with cross-functional collaboration, for sure in a global way and 
we try to think it end to end, integrating as well upcoming due diligences, tier and transparency issues, and and also the the sustainability um, aspects. Yeah, you've you've already seen on on the last slides. So this was our overall target. Um, yeah, to achieve culture supply chain resilience, and on the next slides, yeah, I I will give you some insights on on how we dealt with all this. The key drivers of our change were definitely the, the risk process, the tool itself, the organization, and also the, yeah, I would say the definition of, of new roles within our organization. I will start here, yeah, with kind of the backbone, the, the process. Probably nothing new for you, but definitely really important to, to have the, the risk management process clearly defined in your organization. Considering the time, I won't go into detail here for, for all the aspects, but yeah, just um, yeah, have some few words on, on, on the main elements, I would say. Starting here on the, on the right top, yeah, always the, the identification of, of risks on, on supplier side. Um, here, the continuous monitoring and yeah, the the risk data gathering, which yeah is highly automated, is is really important for us. This allows us to to go really into detail where needed, and not to go into detail yeah where it's not that critical. Next step is is always the the evaluation, where we use the yeah the standard pre-wave KPIs and kind of customize them also according to our needs. This allows us to, to do the risk analysis on the one side and also to do different calculations uh, in, in order to, yeah, to evaluate the, the risks for us um, within our culture organization. Always yeah, followed by the, the mitigation here, one of the most important steps where new processes have to be set up for different scenarios, yeah, and in order, yeah, to undertake target-oriented measures for the risks as well. And lastly, the control of the, the efficiency, which means checking the results of the measures, for example, but also integrating the, the risk perspectives in, in our procurement processes. That's, yeah, in a, in a really short manner, our process behind the scenes, I would say. But as already said, what you may see here, the tool we are using is, is also of, of really high importance. Goes yeah, kind kind of hand in hand with hand in hand with the processes um, we've just seen. We already started to to work with FreeWave, I think was back in, in 2018 or 19 when when Freewave was yeah, a kind of a, a, a two-person startup and yeah. Very at the beginning, I would say. Um, in the meantime, Brewave developed. We developed our risk management, and yeah, we are using now a, a quite wide range of of the Brewave features in order to yeah also use the the synergies within our risk management approach. For example, we use the real time monitoring shown here. Also, we make commodity analysis on a frequent basis, and yeah, we are performing important risk analysis and, and measure steps of different due diligence laws like the German LKSG. And yeah, as you can see here as well, yeah, we are doing specific TN analysis, what we will see also on the upcoming slides. Raw material monitoring, yeah, would, would still be for us a topic for, for, for the future, but yeah, as well the, for example, the, the pre-wave action platform um, which is not shown here on the slide, um, will be a future topic. I will start after this overview with, with a short deep dive into the commodity risk analysis area. Um, just the, the colorful matrix you, you, you may see on, on the last slide. For us, supplier risk is yeah, defined as, as an important part of our risks and also of our commodity strategies. And yeah, in, in order to process them, we are using the risk analysis 
as an integrated part of our strategies. Here, really in general, you, you may see the, the concept of the analysis, combining the risk on the one side with the impact of a supplier in a, yeah, in, a, in a really scientific way so that we are able to derive measures and actions out of the, the supplier position in the matrix here on the, on the right side um, in, in the matrix. That's the, the general idea um, yeah, in a nutshell of, of our portfolio risk analysis. Here end mappings as well, um, yeah, supported by the artificial intelligence in the tool, um, yeah, represents another element um, also on, on the road to, to detect supplier risks in our supply chain. We use the existing and also constantly growing FreeWave database here. Um, yeah, public available data from customs and taxes. And we are mapping yeah, specific use cases for us, um, which you may see here on the, on the next slide. For example, we are mapping critical commodities or critical suppliers or um, yeah, really important products of us in in order to yeah to to gain more transparency. The main challenge always for us here is yeah, I would say definitely the yeah the fast growing amount of data and yeah, from time to time you time to time you will have difficulties definitely to to handle this amount of data, but nevertheless on the other side you you may gain a never existing transparency in your supply chain and and this is uh, yeah a really huge benefit out of these kind of tier n analysis and yeah lastly out of this overview due diligence is um, we are all facing several existing and and upcoming laws and yeah we have to align with with these new compliance uh, requirements in, in several countries. I won't name them all, them all um, as you also know, know the best, um, Norwegian Transparency Act, LKSG, the upcoming European law. Therefore, for us, again, the tool, the organization, the roles, and also the, the processes, um, in our opinion, is, is really key um, also in implementation. That yeah, that you keep in mind um, yeah, to yeah, to to capture all these these four areas. I will show you here on the next slide um, in an exemplary way the the procedure of our initial risk analysis. Probably Scheffler will will give you some more details and and insights in in some minutes. Um, all starts always with the data work. Um, then better the internal database, then easier the whole process. That's one of my key learnings um, out of out of our risk analysis. Luckily, in in our case, we we had a, a quite good database when we were starting um, the upload with FreeWave. Just yeah to to undertake the 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 abstract risk analysis with country and with risk in risk scores um industry risk score followed yeah then here on in the next step by the the concrete risk investigation so yeah that we were able to complete the the 360 degree risk view also in the next step with the impact calculation in yeah in order to write start with the afterwards with the derivation of um, measures and, and actions afterwards. So yeah, we were able to, to complete the, the risk view also with, with the impact and yeah, in general, all steps yeah, implemented in, in the tool were, were highly standardized and, and yeah, also highly automized and yeah, also supported with, with different services um, between the different steps. So. This is really a, a quite rough overview about our risk analysis, how, how we did it at, at Kartra um, within this year. We, we started quite early with, with this kind of um, risk analysis so that we had enough time to also keep, keep in focus on, on the 
on the meshes and, and actions area. And yeah, in general, this, this was a really quick tour <laughs> through our different elements of, of our risk management world. Um, yeah, what we expect in general is, is, a, is a huge efficiency enhancement in our sourcing organization. By the supported approach with with FreeWaves AI, we internally compared it with a yeah, quite manual questionnaire approach, and we expect, as Harald already indicated in in his introduction, um, for example, that that we are forty that we spend forty times less effort here um, compared to a really manual questionnaire based approach. Furthermore, as you can see here, yeah, we, for example, also expect that, that we get the information and also the, the alerts out of the system around about three days faster because of the, of the AI-based alerting. And yeah, that's it. So yeah, a, a, a quite good efficiency approved in, in our opinion. And yeah, here you may see the overview. So yeah. That's it in general from, from my side. I talked a lot now, <laughs> hopefully not too much. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks so much, Raphael. I think this was already a, a great overview and we have a lot of questions already okay. uh, <laughs> uh, coming in. Uh, so um, maybe um, in general, uh, one, one or two questions from my side. Um, mm -hmm. So we're using really a broad set of features already from supply chain act to the monitoring, the resilience, the, so the commodity analysis and, and, and tier N analysis. How are you handling this organizationally? Like, is this all different departments working with pre-wave? Uh, is it go all going through you basically as the global risk mm -hmm. manager? How is this working at Kirche? <laughs> mm -hmm. In general, regarding the organization we we decided yeah to to have a kind of hybrid approach so on the one side our our purchases they all have access to to freeway for example in order to yeah to to handle their suppliers itself then um we also installed the the role of of risk experts in in each of our global organization um so they have a kind of expertise and, and consult also the others. But as well, we, we have a central unit, including me, for example, who is also coordinating and yeah, driving some topics out of, out of our headquarter and the, the headquarters uh, center of excellence. But as you indicated, it's not an, only a matter of sourcing and procurement. We are also cooperating, for example, a lot with our sustainability department with our logistics and also with our quality um, to work hand in hand um, in, in these cases. But yeah, in the end, yeah, it's 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 driven by our sourcing and procurement um, department. And can you tell, because there's a few questions, what types of risks are you actually monitoring with, with Prewave at Kercher? Um, and how are you then dealing with these, uh, for instance, alerts that, that you identify? Do you have a process for that internally? Mm -hmm. Definitely, that's that's really important to, to have the process behind. Um, in general, we are dealing yeah, with, with a quite, yeah, quite a, a large base of risks, um, almost all from financial risks, natural disaster risks, um, to CSR risks, to yeah, due diligence risks, for example, environmental, human rights, etc. So you also need specific processes for all these kind of risks and yeah, really clear um, yeah, to, to do, I would say, and for, also for the measures, you, you need to define a yeah, specific catalog um, in, in order yeah, to know what to do in which case. And as, as I already mentioned, as we we've, we've chosen this kind of hybrid approach on the one side we we have the the purchases directly getting the alerts but on the other side we have also an, an central team supervising and and checking also the the alerts if if there is something super critical or yeah maybe something not so critical mm -hmm. and you showed in your slides that you were able to 
have maybe on average uh, these three days of, of, of time advantage. Um, can you give some examples? Of course, without going into any detail on suppliers, but risks you've actually seen and were able to respond to, like just, um, of course, without going into detail, but but what, what types yeah. of topics are you working with? Yeah. Uh, sure, yeah. I I would say that, that we had several in, in the last months and the last year. I can just remember as, as it's yeah, just from this weekend, uh, we got in an, yeah, an insolvency from, from a supplier, um, which we are currently checking and um, where we did not have any indication before. So I think it, it popped up um, on Saturday or something like that. We, we got the info, saw the info this morning. But yeah, as, as already said, we, we had that info not from any other channels. So um, at least save two days here in this case. And this is just an example. We also, for example, had yeah, some, some months ago in case with, with a kind of blood in an area um, where we got the, the alert out of pre-wave, but um, yeah, there was nothing specific in the news or, or we, we got no specific information from the supplier and yeah, just got the, the information out of the system. So there are several different cases we had and yeah, therefore this this rough indication with, with the three, three days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe what was also very interesting, you showed this, how you're using the risk matrix and working with the, the suppliers with critical impact. Um, there it would also because there's a question how do you again measure this impact if you can maybe explain it again how this is measured mm -hmm. and also some of the measures you took with those suppliers like what what did you do did you decide to add a second source did you decide to maybe um build up more inventory with certain suppliers um i think that would be also very interesting to yeah that that's the one yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think yeah, to, to answer to this question, it's, it's good to, to have again the, the overview because yeah, I, I was a little bit fast <laughs> going over this. Um, here in, in on the left side here in this business interruption section, um, you will yeah, find the, the approach um, how we calculate the, the impact of a supplier. Um, it's according to this, this formula. So in general, there are yeah, two main factors. Um, which we integrate in, in the, the calculation of the impact. On the one side, it's the, um, the impact the, the supplier has on, on sales volume. So sales volume in the direction of our customer. So we internally calculate this, this number. We, we set up a um, yeah, um, kind of approach with, with our IT. Sorry. Um, so we are able to 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 yeah have a number here for each of our suppliers. So we know for each supplier, this supplier has this amount of impact um, on our sales volume. And on the other side, we we also have the the time factor. So we know um, how much time we would spend to to switch from one supplier to the other, and um, we also take uh, into consideration here the, the safety stocks. So if a supplier is not delivering um, tomorrow, how long does it take um, to switch to another suppliers and how much safety stock do we have in our in our storage or also on, on supplier side? So yeah, there is a formula behind um, also a lot of data work and that's the way we, we calculate um, this this impact figure. And in terms of the actions you took as a result, like, can you give some examples? Uh, you know, identify this, this one in the very top right. Um, what are you doing? <clears throat> so, yeah, in general, um, you have to, to take a look what you want to develop or do you want to work on the supplier risks itself? So here, work horizontally developing the, the supplier for example, doing workshops or certifications, or if you want to, to work on the supplier's impact. So for example, build up a second source or safety stocks. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one other question that, that we received was about the tier N uh, mapping. Um, maybe you can quickly explain how did you choose which kind of suppliers or, or categories you want to map and then also um, what is the approach that was chosen and are you also asking your suppliers for their sub suppliers like uh, how is this working there's a few questions <laughs> yeah <clears throat> okay sure <laughs> um as already indicated we we are mapping for example critical critical commodities um yeah mainly in in the electronics sector we are we are making some deep dives or for example also critical suppliers we we are having a, a deeper look at and in some cases also some some critical products i'm sorry I have some problems with my voice <laughs> um how we are doing this um on the one side um we we are gathering the the prewave data so prewave is is looking into public uh, available customs and and fry data and they are looking for some connections between our suppliers and their sub suppliers but in some cases for example if you have smaller smaller suppliers or really local suppliers uh, prewave won't find any data and in this cases you have to go um yeah more into detail with your purchases for example and um, collect their know-how or you have to ask and work together with the suppliers to yeah to sharpen your data and also to enlarge your data because in some cases the yeah the ai and the public available data yeah have some borders and in this cases you you have to spend some internal efforts or efforts with your supplier and yeah enlarge this data set um, with your know-how with the supplier's know-how so that's mm-hmm. The way we are working in in terms of tier n yeah but as already indicated the the amount of data is really growing really really fast and um, that's also the case or the reason we said um, we can't do these kind of tier n analysis for all our our suppliers for all our commodities um yeah because it's yeah just not available we we don't have the capacity to to do it and 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 yeah that large amount yes and uh, of course i take this also as a challenge as a software provider that with the large number of data we should uh, give the right visualizations and insights yeah. to derive the conclusions from this data and i can already say we are we have some good things coming on on this topic um, we have an expert exchange event um, on the 21st of November here in Vienna. Um, for those that most of you have been invited probably, but uh, for those uh, not, we will add it to the to the send out for the webinar afterwards. And there we will introduce some new functionalities around visualizing the tier N. And we will also have another session on the, the risk matrix approach that Raphael showed earlier and uh, because this is a big challenge, we see how you get to the data and 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 what can be done. Yeah. Mm. So we have still a few questions, Raphael, but to give your voice a little bit of a, a rest. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Let's move over to Thorsten Bühning from uh, from Schaeffler. Um, yeah, Thorsten, if you can try to to share your screen and and introduce yourself. Yes, I will do. And and welcome and great to have you. <laughs> thank you very much, Harald, and thank you also, uh, Raphael. Um, I just have to check how it works. We see the PowerPoint now, um, so not at the presentation mode. Now maybe you should. Uh, it's something is um, now again the just the PowerPoint. Can I? Let's try again. We, we tested it before, but uh, <laughs> no. unfortunately, that's always the. So I have it also ready on my side, uh, Thorsten, in case it's not. Maybe right. yes. Do you want to try again, or should I? Uh, no, I... then then please please do. Mm-hmm. I will share it right now. 
maybe checking with perfect. you after and can you see perfect. this per perfect yeah okay let's yeah let's do it like yeah. this so the, i hand the word to you uh, to yeah to, uh, thanks many many thanks um yes my name is Thorsten Bünning from Scheffler i'm from the governance uh, um, department purchasing sustainability and uh, well my main topic for today is uh, talking about uh, the due diligence for standalone entities or so-called non-integrated entities and the slogan or the announcement uh, from the webinar uh, mentioned that we did it in two months uh, that's correct for our standalone entities but of course uh, Scheffler started um, approximately two years before um, to do uh, the uh, risk analysis uh, for our uh, integrated suppliers within our our system mm -hmm. and therefore please the next slide yes um, <laughs> yeah um, I will first talk a little uh, about the sustainability and strategy of Scheffler then this is a sustainability approach on the requirements towards suppliers and last but not least I will uh, talk about the project we started and solved with Prewave uh, as a managed service successfully uh, for our um, standalone uh, entities. <laughs> well, our um, ambition, uh, environmental, social and governance targets within Scheffler are shown in this slide. Uh, Scheffler is uh, changing to a motion company and uh, did a transition within the last years. And um, of course, Scheffler have a long, long history within uh, environmental protection. We have the EMAS certification many, many years and all other certification for environmental and also, of course, the quality topics uh, within the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. But now a uh, new core part of Scheffler's uh, corporate strategy uh, is to fulfill the ESG targets and uh, it starts of course with climate neutral supply chain. It go on with our internal climate neutral production and of course um, the initial the energy efficiency uh, within our plants. Uh, we will use and we are using renewable energy uh, for most of our processes and we are on a strong way uh, to use those uh, renewable energy um, and install uh, enough power uh, to drive our, our plants on our own. Of course, we have also some social topics uh, within, for example, women in top management. We have, uh, well, not so popular at the moment, but uh, while we are talking about freshwater supply, uh, of course, a topic of employee safety and last but not least, again, the sustainable uh, suppliers, which is really important also for our German due diligence act. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. Well, and digging a little deeper in our focuses, um, we on 10 action fields. We start on the left hand side with the environmental part. Um, I mentioned before climate neutrality. Of course, the resource efficiency and environmental protection as one of our main focus targets, the so circularity, and of course, green products. In the middle of the slide, we have the social aspects. Uh, we are talking, of course, uh, about diversity, uh, employees, and also people development um, for our own, and uh, the responsibility in the society and of course in our supply chain. What is also a large target, an important target is the occupational health and safety. And of course, for our customer, uh, the product safety and the integrity. And on the right hand side, the governmental topics and uh, themes, um, the corporate governance, of course, and the business integrity. We are talking and uh, we are organized at Scheffler in a so-called triangle. That means we are cooperating uh, really in details with our compliance department, with our own organizational 
um, function for um, EHS topics and our own uh, purchasing sustainability. What is, what is not in every time really easy because we are um, structured in um, divisional um, functions and regional functions and therefore um, we have uh, also uh, some well um, a connection and uh, some um, requirements uh, towards the operational business mm -hmm. the picture on the button shows our strategy as a, a house of strategy we can call it uh, it consists on green purchasing green production and green products with the uh, ESG uh, topics all over and with the basis of finance and IT and of course uh, all our people also of course the employees of our uh, suppliers and um, the uh, social uh, partners outside our business and company. Um, you may have seen uh, our sustainability report we are providing and within the slide there at the button is our, also a link you may follow if you get the slides later on after the semi seminar. Well, what uh, also uh, shows what we are doing within the last years um, is within those kind of ratings. Here are some of our uh, popular ratings and uh, therefore you can see a lot of improving um, on the left hand side Ecovadis in the middle our NQC supplier assurance which is also an important tool um, for analyzing our suppliers then our own rating for CDP for water and climate change and some um, sustainable analytics and uh, financial ratings uh, for Standard & Poor's, for example. And you see, um, I would call it, it works. What we are doing uh, within the company and of course, uh, in cooperation with our suppliers. Well, but coming now to our sustainability approach towards our suppliers. Um, well, it's uh, on the slide, a really simple process. But uh, if you dig deeper, you know, um, within uh, those single topics, there is a lot of work. First, we have to create the basis. And there we work, of course, with our supplier code of conduct. And uh, we also work together with, for example, the VDA uh, to create a new business partner codex in the future, maybe uh, to get a better alignment and to reduce uh, the efforts within the supply chain, sending around different um, supplier codices uh, and to accept them um, from each other. The next step is to identify the risk. And um, well, of course, we do our um, sustainability risk assessment uh, by two different systems it mentioned, I mentioned before for our all integrated suppliers, we use an approach uh, which was uh, self-developed uh, two years before. And for our uh, non-integrated suppliers, standalone entities, we use the previous uh, risk assessment approach. Well, after knowing the risk, of course, we have to reduce the risk. That means um, we try to use um, standards and uh, global approaches though that we uh, can be sure to reduce the risk. And uh, we use in the next step also uh, the self-assessment mentioned before by NQC, for example, um, to evaluate the sustainability performance of our suppliers into details. And last but not least, uh, also the topic of creating incentive is important because um, with the operating purchasing, um, we use for our sourcing decisions um, also the information um, of the sustainability actions 
uh, which are in place at the suppliers and uh, what kind of details the supplier can provide to us and help us to realize our targets, of course. Mm -hmm. Slide. Mm -hmm. Um, well, um, the expectation towards our suppliers, uh, not to dig into too much details, um, of course, uh, we expect that the suppliers at the left-hand side um, accept our policies, accept our supplier code of conduct, and help us uh, to get compliance with conflict minerals, for example, or critical raw materials, which is a very important topic, which in uh, the automotive um, branch. Um, we ask also uh, for a completion of um, carbon company, uh, company carbon footprint, and of course product carbon footprint uh, by using other tools, um, uh, for example, supply on for our production material suppliers. And um, we try in the middle of the slide to develop um, the suppliers also and support the development of our suppliers towards sustainability by uh, implementation of risk uh, mitigation measures in cooperation with the suppliers uh, with um, continuous improvement of the SAQ score mentioned before uh, and of course with more transparency into carbon emissions and decarbonization strategies of course. Uh, therefore, we use also the CDP approach um, um, by our own and ask also for uh, identified suppliers to support us with this topic. And um, the target line is within 2023 and 2024. And uh, having a look in the future, um, 2025 and uh, the years behind, um, our target is still renewable energy sources and suppliers, uh, the continuous development of carbon reducement, circular, circularity strategy, and of course, in high transparent uh, supply chain. And that's uh, especially for critical raw materials and conflict minerals also relating to the end tier uh, suppliers. Um, more information you can find on our supplier landing page which shows also our um, whole documents and them helping hands for uh, example, also for trainings, um, which are uh, for free um, uh, that we take over the costs and our suppliers can use um, and um, join those trainings. So next slide, please. Well, but now uh, the most important thing, our standalone entities project with Prewave. Um, on this slide, you see two parts. We have on the left hand side the integrated group companies and uh, also suppliers we are dealing with. Um, they um, are managed in our MDG, our SAP Master Data Governance System, which will lead at the bottom to an uh, own approach of human rights risk assessment at Scheffler. And um, in addition, we have uh, also included a GTS system from SAP uh, for our export control and sanction functions. And on the right hand side, uh, we have the topic of standalone group companies. Um, according to the law, the German Due Diligence Act, we are totally responsible for so standalone entities, and we identified um, a lot of those which are not integrated with the suppliers in our systems. For example, um, startups or, for example, um, sales offices in different country Scheffler is working with, and uh, we have the accountability um, for our uh, risk analysis. And you see um, our thoughts, how can we integrate those standalone companies in our systems uh, to fulfill the German law? The first option, of course, we can integrate the information in our master data governance. The second one, we can use our global trade systems um, or 
we can on the uh, third or fourth option uh, different ways uh, to leave it on their own but under the accountability of our governable functions and um, that was a um, very complex analysis how we can do and how we can can, can solve the problem um, because uh, the integration in many cases in our systems was not available because, and therefore we can switch on this next slide, um, we have to use a lot of data to do our risk analysis uh, performance, uh, starting with general suppliers information, um, using additional sustainability classification information, for example, ratings, for example, the code of conduct exceptions, uh, the information about certification and their validity, um, and other information, for example, for social audits, and of course, also some financial and company details, the share of sales spend, turnover, number of employees, and all this stuff which was very difficult and which was not realistic to solve within, well, the two months. And there we are talking really about two months uh, to uh, start the project. And we can switch to the next slide. Um, to start the project with Prewave as a managed service. And that's the original timeline. Um, we identified the topic uh, mid of this year and um, we feel not good with the situation um, because we also don't know about the individual processes of our standalone uh, entities also we will be accountable for uh, so standalone entities and we started with prewave and the first step was to identify um, the business partners, internal Scheffler, um, for the corresponding details. And then Prewave supported us with some uh, video sections for explanation what the um, project is going on, how we can identify the relevant suppliers for each uh, legal entity. And we are talking about about approximately 40 legal entities at the beginning, and then um, verify all the information, um, find out the details regarding uh, the supplier, and import those data um, within Prewave. And um, then, of course, um, do the checks uh, according to the abstract risk analysis at the first step. And then uh, together um, the definition, how we will go on with a concrete risk analysis. And um, that was, was really, well, a tough project and uh, with, a, with a really good um, uh, service from Brewave. And um, we got it, though that we are in line at September. Um, to have all the results um, for more than 8,000 suppliers within Prewave. And now we are working with uh, the details were mentioned uh, from a referral from Kercher. And uh, well, that was um, a short overview of our uh, project handling with um, Prewave for those uh, standalone entities. And on the next slide, um, we will see um, what we expect from our own system and also from our um, approach with, with Prewave. And it was fully, um, uh, full, it was fulfilled uh, in total. And I won't go into the details because we know uh, the tools of abstract and concrete risk analysis with standardized methods, uh, which are uh, very, very important. And uh, therefore, I would like to step in the next slide, which uh, shows uh, the result um, on the top 
we started with a, a results from risk analysis for our Scheffler Group integrated suppliers. And uh, it's uh, leading in our um, uh, Grundsatzerklärung in Germany declaration um, for the BAFA, um, which uh, was done at uh, Q3 uh, in the middle of the year based on our results from our own integrated suppliers. And at the button, um, we are able, we were able to add within September of this year also the results of our standalone uh, legal entities, which leads, and that's also one important aspect, um, which shows the same prior prioritized risks uh, that are. Um, here within and according to the BAFA reglementation, M3 and M4, that means risk disregard of occupational health and safety and work-related health hazards and failure to respect of freedom, uh, the freedom of association and uh, the right of collective bargaining. And that shows us that the approach uh, we did by our own and we did by Greywave is a quite good approach and uh, leads to the same uh, prioritized risk um, we have uh, to show and to publicate in our human rights uh, statement uh, by end of the year and also um, to get reported, of course, in the BAFA report. Well, and that's a closer. Many thanks for listening. I think it was a lot of stuff. And now please feel free to send in your questions. And uh, Harald, uh, please uh, moderate uh, those questions. Well, thanks so much, Thorsten, for this great summary and uh, yeah, demonstration of our project. Um, you mentioned it was a tough project. It was certainly also for us a tough project. <laughs> <laughs> the startup, you know, we we take pride in trying to be fast and uh, we want to be fast. And I think you challenged us and um, we also like a challenge. <laughs> and then uh, I think we came to the challenge. I think what was shown in your um, project plan is that it was not just from kickoff to risk analysis in two months, but even from from the first sales contact, right? So we did yes. <laughs> we had the contracting and we had, <laughs> and we had uh, all of the legal stuff done um, and we still managed to be in time, which only works if both sides, I think, are very pragmatic. Yeah? And I think this yes. was certainly the case here. Um, but maybe going back to the decision. So still, you, you were at this point where you said we still have to cover the standalone entities. and. What was then the reason, first of all, to say we have to go with an external system? And then what was the reason to say, okay, and we go with pre-wave and not some other external system? Can you can you go into that? Yes, yes. Um, uh, I mentioned uh, the complexity of uh, details for our suppliers, which are not available uh, from our standalone legal entities to include those supplier in our master data governance. And therefore we take a look on the market and analyzed uh, several service providers. Uh, and we decided to go on uh, with Prevave because, um, well, um, we had a good feeling and we had, um, we are convinced that we can solve uh, this project within the uh, time uh, we have um, in the summer. Mm -hmm. And that was an was a, a important reason. And of course, we have uh, seen some parts of the tool before, uh, do several webinars to some presentation. And you know, we are in contact since over one and a half year, I think. Um, and therefore, uh, we known each other and we are convinced that we are able to solve this topic. Mm -hmm. We have a question and I will try something I've never done before in a webinar, which is allow a, a, a participant to, to ask the question themselves. So Ms. Demke uh, um, raised her hand. So I will now allow you to talk. Um, you're now on stage, Ms. Demke. So feel free to ask the question. 
if it works. Let's see. You have to unmute. It's is on mute. Maybe I'm, I'm surprising her now as well. Uh, yeah, now we can hear you. I have some technical issues, to be honest, right now. If we can hear can you. You, you can, can hear me? Yeah. OK, I asked a couple of questions. So which to which one do you refer? <laughs> because I asked to, uh, during the Kahan presentation. Okay. No, I just saw you raising the hand, and I thought you had an Oh, immediate... I was raising the hands? Yeah, no. yeah. No, 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 then, then big, that was because of my technical issues. I'm struggling here a little bit. Sorry, sorry. No. <laughs> to put you on the spot then, but is there any open question still from the one you, you asked earlier or were they? Um, yeah, well, well there were, I asked two questions. Uh, one was uh, regarding the, um, I mean, with preview, we can cover the supplier view, but not the own business area, which is also required to be done by uh, the uh, uh, the yeah. <laughs> or uh, and another point is like preweb is really helpful with analyzing the tool uh, the risk and CV alerts but uh, the more important question is how we treat them so I, I guess you asked that question already uh, in earlier but this is a tricky part because like once we know now, like before we didn't know, now we know. And the question is, what do we do and what is sufficient? So, I mean, everyone is to develop their own procedures and to define because the, the law does not uh, tell what exactly we need to do. But uh, at the end, we don't know um, what's accepted so that we are curious to know the experience from other uh, users. Yeah. Okay. Thank. Thank you so much. I mean, I can. I can bring these questions back to maybe Raphael. How are you handling the risk analysis for the own Kircher business area? So your own uh, scope. Mm -hmm. Are you using some of the functionalities from previous? Are you using an own way for for that? <clears throat> um, yeah. <clears throat> I I also already responded in in the chat. So um, what we are doing, we are covering parts of the the yearly risk analysis for for the own business area and pre-wave but but not the complete risk analysis but for example for for the abstract analysis um you can do it uh, quite good with pre-wave and with the concrete risk analysis in our opinion you you have to to do a um yeah a, a larger deep dive um which is yeah partly not not um possible in in pre-wave but for the, the earlier stages and yeah as a kind of base um, you can start with the with the with the abstract one and um, develop it further um, outside of the system that's that's how we do it mm -hmm. okay thank you um maybe Thorsten, there's a question how is Schaeffler working with its suppliers when it comes to giving them incentives on being more sustainable and also implementing measures on their side so what are you how are you incentivizing your suppliers to 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 take action and to improve themselves um well of course there's uh, no uh, general answer possible but um we using a so-called sustainability target agreement in um, many cases and we define their improvement or um other targets of course and um, if the supplier realize and support us uh, typically in our own targets, then we have a kind of uh, incentivization. Um, for example, a bonus malus system within our sourcing decisions. And therefore, um, we can, well, uh, incentivate our suppliers. I think one, one point I wanted to quickly touch upon is that I think Schaeffler is a member of the, let's say, automotive community and automotive industry. I think this is a bit of a distinction if you compare it against Kercher, because I, I see that there's a lot of infrastructure, there's associations, you have the, the SAQ, the RSCI audit initiative. Um, how do you perceive this as a, as a, do you see it also as a big benefit that, that you are, let's say, part of an ecosystem? Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, it's, it's really important, uh, I think, to use those standardized uh, solutions because also the buffer requested um, not to stress our suppliers with uh, high efforts uh, and individual questionnaires and so on and uh, individual audits and so on. 
and uh, therefore um, we decided uh, to use, um, for example, the NQC SAQ, uh, which is also integrated in, in Prewave uh, as a measure, and um, which is really important um, because uh, the approach is uh, sharing uh, the um, SAQ results um, within uh, the community, of course, and uh, also sharing the costs, and the costs are on the requester and not at the supplier. That's also important for, for SAQ. And the other topic you mentioned is the Responsible Supply Chain Initiative, RSCI, uh, which uh, Scheffler is a founding member of. And um, we use those audits also as a measure and um, to get an evaluation um, of the improvement because um, uh, the realization of the measures uh, must be validated according to the requirements of the BAFA. And uh, in German Wirksamkeitsprüfung, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, there are so much uh, verbs <laughs> within the <laughs> law and um, I can't remember everyone. And um, therefore, uh, it's important to use those standardized tools and I can in invite all of you within um, the webinar. Um, we tried to use them also in other industries because uh, Scheffler, I mentioned before, we have an, a divisional organization. We have our automotive technologies. We have our industry, including railway and including um, aerospace. And we have our aftermarket, which is totally different from, well, typically producing uh, and manufacturing parts. And uh, all of us uh, also have the differentiation between uh, production material suppliers and non-production material suppliers. And uh, that's, again, I would, would not call it total different stuff, but there are, um, well, much more information available within the production material suppliers as in the non-production material suppliers because also of their uh, strategic approaches and so on. And therefore, I, I can invite everyone uh, to take a look at those um, branch initiatives or um, cooperate, for example, with VDA, VDMA, CLEPA, and all the others. Um, to help and to get a good approach and to solve the problems um, as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. There is a question that came in, I think also probably towards Scheffler. Do you also already look at the downstream value chain? Um, so um, downstream value chain meaning, let's say some of the waste management and maybe the logistics side of things. I mean, I think maybe actually a question to, to both of you, yeah, because this is also, I know something, Rafael, you, you are looking at, um, maybe you can comment on, on that, yeah, because it's also somehow part of the supply chain act and is often forgotten is this, this kind of waste management downstream side of, of, of the equation. Yeah. Maybe Rafael, you want to go first? <laughs> um, so, the, the question is in in direction of of our downstream value chain or mm, yeah yeah exactly so logistics for instance um, yeah yes, yeah logistics for example yeah we are doing a yeah a, a current kind of kind of project we we have a special interest in in yeah in this area of of, of our suppliers as it's yeah a, a quite high risk in in general um, not country specific but yeah almost all over the world to yeah to to make some pre preventive measures here and yeah logistics definitely is is, is one area of, of action and we are dealing with at the moment um, and there's another question here that um, i think uh, are you looking at um, only at production material suppliers or also are you also looking at indirect uh, non-production material and maybe differentiate by use case yeah so for supply chain act yeah and maybe for resilience disruption risks yeah at culture um, 
regarding res resilience and disruption risk, we are definitely focusing on, on production material. But um, regarding to the LK or with regards to the LKSG, um, we have no separation. We, we are looking at all suppliers, and, yeah, non production and production material. Um, yeah, we uploaded all all our suppliers all over the world in in the system and yeah, um, analyze them yeah equal yes that's also the the way Scheffler do it um of course uh, focusing on the production material but uh, nevertheless uh, analyzing all uh, our suppliers mm -hmm. okay so i think we are already a bit over time maybe the last question i want to ask each of you do you have any tips? Like it could be anything, but uh, to other previous customers or things they should consider, think about uh, something you learned that really helped you. Any tips uh, to share with with the other customers? <clears throat> Shall I start? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Rob. Yeah, maybe maybe one tip or, or one one key learning um, definitely is that data is is yeah a key driver. Keep your data clean. Uh, I always say, and yeah, all, also exchange the data between the different systems. That that's how we do it. Um, means, for example, integrating the risk data in your systems in your supplier view. Yeah, make supplier risks just an an important part of 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 your category strategies. And yeah, I'm I'm sure will save you money in in long term in 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 the future. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And my recommendation would be uh, use those uh, webinars, use association um, to get in touch and in exchange with other companies because there are a lot of solution available on the market. There are a lot of standardized uh, approaches uh, which can be useful and uh, don't uh, only ask your uh, legal advisory in your company because it's really difficult and there are a lot of interpretation possible, um, which uh, will lead maybe to uh, high efforts or lower efforts. Mm -hmm. And with that, I uh, want to thank you both very much for participating. I think this is very valuable and we can see that it takes also some preparation on your side and this is very much appreciated to 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 share also this information in the way you do so thank you both so much for taking the time um i want to uh of course mention that we will share the presentations afterwards we will send a follow-up email um you can get in touch of course with our two guests uh, i guess on, on linkedin um, we will ask if we can share also the email addresses <laughs> they will let us know um, but i think as thorsten Bühning just said at the end the exchange is is what's important. I want to show one last thing here is this, this uh, uh, expert exchange event that we have planned on the 21st of November in Vienna um, with um, an agenda presentations by our customers Hilti and Magna. And as I said earlier, some insights into uh, new features. So uh, maybe on a on a last minute sign up, uh, if you haven't signed up yet, uh, we would be happy to, to welcome you there. And uh, with that, again, I wish everybody a, a, a nice evening. And again, thanks to Thorsten and Raphael for, for joining today. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. <clears throat>